There we go. Right, art college. I'm a little bit embarrassed now because after watching all that, I think I went to one of the shittest colleges in England. Because um, it's like my 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 entire view of art college is entirely skewed uh, to Southampton Institute. Don't ever go to Southampton Institute. I'm a visiting professor at fucking Southampton Institute, and even I'm just saying don't go there. But it was fine, I suppose, when I was there. But essentially rather boring. I wasn't happy. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't, also don't back comb your hair and use crimpers because when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I didn't really sort of like so much go to college as use their facilities. Um, and when everyone was out getting pissed at the, at the student union bar, um, which they did kind of like all the time um, in the daytime as well. Um, I was kind of like locked into the computer room because when I when I was when I went to when I went to college, um, they'd had their first delivery of something called an Apple Mac. Now I'm only 40, <clears throat> and and so that's not all that long ago. That you know the things that we take completely for granted now were like these brand new bits of innovation, and I'd certainly never seen anything like that before. And it was amazing, and, and I just wanted to learn everything that I could about that. And I got friendly with the, um, with the guy who owned the computer room, um, and then um, just basically spent my life in there, and that, and that was brilliant. But it's fair to say that, that actually going to college didn't actually teach me nothing, um, and that I learned everything pretty much when I left college. Um, when I was asked by, it's nice that to come, they said, come and talk, come and talk about art college, because you've got some strong views about art college, haven't you? And I was like, have I? Um, okay, I'll make something up. Art college is interesting to me because I don't know what it means. Um, it's art versus design. Is it craft skills or creativity? Because I've got a very strong view that you can't teach creativity. It just can't be done. I went onto Google before I came out and I typed in how to be more creative. And sure as shit, like a thousand books turn up about telling me how to be creative and you go Google images and here's 20 things to be more creative. You know, take your shoes off and walk on the grass. It's just like, fuck off. That's not, that's not going to teach anyone anything. You can't teach people how to be creative, but you very, very definitely can teach people how not to be creative. This is, um, I love, uh, you've seen Point Blank with Keanu Reeves. Awesome film. Um, this is uh, from Special Agent Ben Harp, who is uh, his boss, right? You know nothing, in fact, you know less than nothing. If you knew that you knew nothing, that would be something, but you don't. That could have been one of my teachers. It really could have been. That was the attitude. But the thing is, right, and that attitude was prevalent. And I don't know if it still is. Hopefully it isn't, you know, judging by the, 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 the other speakers. Um, but the thing is that kids come pre-programmed with creativity. It's already inside them. And so the thing is, to Ben Harp, if Ben Harp was a design teacher, the thing is the kids probably know everything they already need to know and it's his job to fuck them up. And that's because most kids are born here. The planet, no. As soon as you're born, you're born with an amazing amount of inspiration around you. But you're born to planet, no, where you've got to choose. Here's another brilliant quote. This is from Goza, Goza the Gazarian, Goza the Destructor, and all the other things that they, anyway, Ghostbusters, again, brilliant film. Choose and perish, right? I don't think Goes was using it in this context. But the, th the thing that people get asked as soon as they're born into Planet No is, uh, in our context, are you going to be an artist or a designer? Are you going to be a designer or an engineer? Are you going to be an engineer or a botanist? Are you going to be a botanist or an astronomer? You've got to make a choice. Well, you're already onto a loser. Because the thing is that you'll start to conform 
and conforming. You ask most designers, will you conform? And they'll go, no, I don't, I'm a rebel. You know, I don't conform at all. But the problem is that conformity seeps into you stealthily. Conformity kills creativity just in the same way that processes kill passion. Processes exist around us because they're really nice and safe. Most people don't realize they're conforming, but they feel it in this kind of weird, abstract way that they need to be more creative. Even designers in, in you know, the agencies, oh, I really think I need to be more creative. Maybe I can go on a course. Let's go on a course. Let's go and do some lino printing or something. That'll make us more creative. Or they get self-help books. I've got, I've got some friends who buy these fucking self-help books. Again, the how to be more creative. And they're rubbish. The only person that's actually being creative is the person that wrote it, who's managed to charge somebody 20 quid to read it. I doff my cap to whoever that is. The reality is that people aren't less creative and therefore need to become more creative. They're just reacting to the environments around them that erode that natural creativity in a very stealthy way. In agency land, the stealthy way in which that happens is that's not what we do here phenomenon otherwise known as, can you just focus on the fucking task in hand and do it? Which is fine if you're up against a deadline, but if you want to be more creative, you need to do lots and lots of different things. So what is creativity? So we all know that it's the ability to make connections, right? Everyone knows that. The more connections you can make, the more creative you can be. This is as close as I ever get to a chart, by the way. I drew it. <laughs> so making connections is brilliant. And it will yield results. And if you go on these creative bullshit courses, they'll teach you how to connect all the dots together. And that will bear fruit for quite some time, up until the point that you run out of your own personal knowledge. But the thing is, Knowledge isn't really enough. We've gone from information, which is fine, getting information. Everyone, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when you're, when you're marking people's work as a, as a teacher, you know, you know that they're all using information because they've all gone on Wikipedia and they've all copied the same thing down and they've used information. We know, because we're mature-ish, that information isn't knowledge. So our idea is to collect knowledge and make the connections between that knowledge. Sorry, oh shit, I've got to stay on the podium, haven't I? Didn't you say that? Um, the key to creativity is not just knowledge, but understanding. If you have understanding, then you own your knowledge. And if you own your knowledge, you can start to play with the connections in lots and lots of different ways and come up with things that you never thought possible. How do we do this? You have to acquire, it's very simple actually, you just have to acquire lots and lots of all-consuming Asperger's level hobbies. You have to be so into these things that family becomes a distant memory. <laughs> Acquiring multiple hobbies has the magical consequence of exponentially increasing your abilities in the one thing that you are most interested in. The other great thing is that your brain isn't a fixed mass. It isn't just a thing that shapes your behaviors. It's actually been proven that your behavior changes your brain. So let's think, if a gardener decides to take up engineering, her neurons will create new pathways to isolated regions. So it may just be a mistake to just do one thing. Because if you practice multiple things, you actually get better at any one of those things because of everything else that's going on around you. To strengthen those neural pathways, of course, we have to repeatedly do something. If I just flick through a book in uh, nuclear dynamics, I'm not suddenly going to be able to make a bomb. I need to study it obsessively. But the real trick 
is to get ahead of this disastrous conformity curve. Instill practices within education establishments, within businesses, that hold sacred the idea of something called polymathic creativity. The idea that instead of just being called creatives, you nurture polymaths, people that are amazing at a variety of things, and therefore can channel their creativity in one specific direction. Which kind of brings me to all the things that I learned. Shit, 10 minutes already. Um, what I learn, I can package up as basically my principles for my fantasy art college. If I'd gone to art, if I'd really gone to art, if I hadn't bothered dropping out, then, or gone to a shit college, then maybe this, maybe this already happens. It certainly seems like it happens at Fabrica. The first thing that would happen is that I would teach this. Never grow up. That is the most important thing you can ever do, not grow up. My, one of my daughters, 11 years old, um, she says to me, Dad, all my friends really like you because uh, you're just a child, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. All right, somewhere in there is a compliment. All right, thanks a lot. Never grow up. Second thing, never stop trying to be attractive. <laughs> He's giving it a go. People... Let fuck it factor creep into so much stuff. You know, you're up against it with work, or you've got too much work to do, or there's all this stuff going on around you, or your mates are going out to the pub and you really want to go and do that instead of doing the work for the client, or you've had a client for years and years and years, and, you know, they're like an old sock now. As soon as that starts happening, bad things happen. Like in any relationship. If you stop being attractive to your significant other, guess what? You get dumped. Same in business, same with work. Listen to the voices in your head. They will tell you everything that you need to know. The voices in your head tell you the truth, and largely it's enormously inconvenient what they tell you but they will tell you the truth, they will tell you the right thing, they'll tell you to do the difficult thing, the thing that's going to get in the way of your social life. But if you're hungry, to Zelda's point, you need to listen to it. As long as it's not saying kill, kill, kill. <laughs> Very difficult one, this. If it no longer makes sense, walk away. People turn their decisions into dogma. A decision that you make at any point in time is based on the information that you have to hand at that point in time. But guess what? Situations change, environments change, people change. Shit happens. Don't just stick to your guns all the time. Be prepared to pivot. No drama. Nothing kills a company faster than drama. When an AKQA I kind of like, I want to meet everyone who joins AKQA, or I did when I, when I, was, when I was there. And I'd say, so what do we fight against? And they put up their hand, oh, do we fight against mediocrity? It's like, yep, yep, we do that. Do we fight against shit work? Yep, 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 but we do that. We fight against drama. I've got no time for drama queens or kings. People who just want to create a scene, or people who've got an ego. It'll destroy your company. You just need to find good people. The unofficial hiring policy, no twats in the building. <laughs> and then transform moments. If you're going to do something, if you're going to do some work for someone, there's going to be a person at the end, a user, a customer, or whatever, transform that moment for them. Don't just do another fucking bit of advertising, or another app, or another bit of digital landfill. Do something that actually makes a difference. And in the end, all we're going to do is that. We're going to inspire people, we're going to enable people with our tools, with our services, with our brilliant stuff to make them better, to improve them in some way. We're artists, designers, whatever we are. Our existence is to make things better. 
And if you're not shitting yourself, you're not doing something new. People get really nervous about that. People, oh, I feel nervous, I don't want to do it, I'm scared. Right? Don't be scared. If you're scared, great. Get on and do it. It means that you're not doing the thing that makes you comfortable. And then lastly, what would you do if you weren't afraid? It's a, an obvious statement, but it recontextualized the planet for me. And I thought, right, what would I do if I wasn't afraid? What am I afraid of? Well, I'd leave AKQA. Whoa, shit, you know. I dropped out of college and started AKQA. I've never had a job, ever. That's scary. But what I really wanted to do was do furniture design, or branding, or strategy, or design cars. And so I started another company. I left AKQA and started this thing, Atelier Strange. The point of it is it's strange. Nobody can tell it what to do. So it designs some weird furniture, it does some lighting, you know, it starts tinkering with metallurgy, does some strategy, does all sorts of things. Can't be pigeonholed. And that's brilliant, and that gives freedom. This is some weird bit of 17th century murderer's cabinet that's got technology running all the way throughout it, but it's great fun. But the thing is, it wasn't enough. And I want to go and do something else now as well. Because I've been into motorbikes since I was like 12. And so now I'm going to be starting another company, which I'm not going to tell you all that much about, but it's called that. And it'll be doing amazing shit with stuff that goes fast. Bottom line, I'm really sorry that I've gone over so long, that everything has everything to do with everything. If you're a creative person, don't ever be told you shouldn't be doing that. Can you just get on and do this? If somebody starts telling you that in a company, question what their morals are. Question their creative moral compass. And that's it.